I'm Farzana Gandhi. I'm a professor of architecture here at New York Institute of Technology. Architecture is increasingly important as a discipline that should have a seat at the table when we deal with societal challenges today. Whether it's mass migration, climate change, disaster relief, these ultimately all have something to do with the built environment. It affects you know, how we build buildings, how we plan our cities, and ultimately how we inhabit space. We bring a point of view that's very unique. We can act as specialists and generalists all at once. We can provide the technical expertise but we can also think about all of the parts to the whole. Architects are no longer the, the people that just sit at a, at a drafting table and draw blueprints. We, we actually have to work as economist or work as fundraiser or marketer. You're often building the project yourself. And this is incredibly rewarding because you're working with the community hand in hand. So you really actually understand the real problems of, of the folks that you're building for. We're seeing folks move in large groups in the Middle East, in places like Europe, places they've never been to. And architects can really uh, play a role in how we can build our cities and integrate these folks into uh, society. This is a socioeconomic problem and political problem on one hand, but it's also an architectural problem. We have to rebuild infrastructures. We have to find affordable housing solutions for, for folks. And, and this is something that we have to deal with in tandem. You can't build a home without understanding where that person's coming from and where they're going to. Climate change has really changed the way we design the built environment. We need to think about it on, on the building level in terms of a carbon footprint, but we also have to think about it in terms of a resilient city. Um, in terms of flooding, in terms of storm surges. We have to understand the repercussions, both positive and negative, of our design choices. And that's really important as something to teach our students as, as they design for the future. Sustainability is something that should be thought of from day one. We see that in low-tech solutions around the world for centuries. People have been building where they've been thinking about how ventilation works, passive systems work, uh, you know, dealing with, with hot climates. And so we should be learning from such solutions and actually uh, finding an integrated way of, of developing solutions. Social impact design, in my mind, is about working with uh, the, the you know, socially conscious and environmentally conscious solutions. This has always been a part of the way we think about design, but it has often been reduced to a subset of the profession. I see this as something that is becoming much more mainstream. The APDOC project for Africa is essentially an education center for technology for rural areas in parts of Senegal. Uh, it turns out that folks, you know, have mobile phones, they have access to internet, but they don't actually know how to use these pieces of technology in a meaningful way. This is a place that can um, allow folks to sample an app, to learn with a, a developer right on site with a workshop of how to use the internet, how to download an app. Um, it, it allows a, a, an awareness building for the community. There are apps that can help folks have a, a retina exam through an, a, a smartphone, for example. Or there are uh, apps that can help a farmer know when to rotate their crops. So it becomes something that's super accessible to, to people. The everyday person, the everyday passerby uh, can come by and sample an app, um, use it as a charging station, use it as a wireless hub. And, and actually uh, embrace technology as a part of daily life rather than something that you're coming to um, to have a class in a classroom or a school. Disaster relief is really important and architects can really play a role in that. We can build new cities, we can build new homes for these folks, but really we can even think of a systemic solution where, let's say, you, you think about what shows up at a disaster site, whether it's shipping pallets or water bottles. We can really come up with a system that can bring housing to these masses of people really quickly and very efficiently. The Home 2.0 system is a, a disaster relief uh, delivery system. 
that takes advantage of the things that just come directly as part of an aid relief package, right? So you have shipping pellets and plastic bottles as a first form of relief. Um, we've developed a new shipping pellet that pulls apart and actually becomes the structural system for a shelter. Um, it, it, the geometry of that pallet takes water bottles in a very particular way, so they, it becomes a, almost like Spanish tile, something that, that can drain water very easily and act um, as, a, as a breathable roof for subtropical climate.